Did you blow up the paddling pool? I did blow up the paddling pool. Well, it needs to blow up. Uh, right, the camera's on. Great. Welcome back to our Lego shed. It's had a bit of a change since last time we were filming in it. We'll put some videos of what it used to look like about now. editing yet so what we thought we'd do is we thought we would film a video or some videos getting it from what it currently is which was mum's shed which is just full of clothes which is full of clothes back to being a lego shed and a scale electric shed so we're gonna today we're gonna empty it we're gonna clean it up and then we're gonna lay the scale electric and the lego which we've got here such as this and well maybe you need to sit down this. so people can see yes scale electric track and lego car set yeah so that that's one. the plan scale for today electric jazz. Uh, what's that is that like a let's get on with it is that like a speed thing i think so <laughs> Spiders have gone, I've got rid of them safely. Right, shed's empty. We've cleaned up, we're having a quick brew, and then we'll get on with planning what we're gonna do. So what I did the last time I put a layout in the shed is planned it on the floor first just to see how much space I've got. Obviously, one of the problems with scale extra and Lego is the scale is quite big. It's probably equivalent, I think somewhere around O gauge for scale extra, uh, for Lego, sorry, and, no it isn't, is it's bigger than that, it's about L, L gauge, G gauge, anyway, it's a big old scale. So what I found with Lego is lay it out first, then build the boards. Our shed is about 14 foot by seven and a half foot across, something like that. We've treated both sides of the shed, treated the inside and keep treating the outside. We've got a thin, probably about an inch thick, uh, kingspan like material insulation and then just the um, pine lined it. Nothing too fancy. I didn't put a damp proof in. It's not had any problems in a couple of years. It probably will have, but we'll see. Floor wise, getting just some cheap laminate flooring and the fibre matting stuff underneath. That's a big upgrade from the last time Lego was in here. Lego was in here previously, didn't have any insulation, didn't have any proper flooring in, did have a couple of oil radiators and they're attached to a thermostatic plug which is quite useful. So I've set that 10 degrees, 15 degrees, it just comes on. We're actually quite fortunate here, the shed's really sheltered, it's in between a great big wall that side and the house at that side. So it's pretty good. So we'll finish our brew and then we're going to lay out on the floor what we want the layout to look like with some of the lessons that we've learned from the last layout. And then the next step after that will be to attach some battens to the wall and put some MDF tables on and obviously get the thing off the floor. That's the plan. Plan? Uh, yeah. I already finished my cup of tea. Nice one. Do you want another biscuit? Oh, yeah. 
Right, so we're at this end of the shed where the door is. What we did last time when we built the layout is we had it going down one side and across the back yeah. behind the camera. So you kind of walked in here and it was all open down the side. The problem with that was one, you lose all of that side of the shed and also everything is squashed as much as it can be because what I wanted for the Lego was, you've seen on the videos, different was to have towns. yeah different yeah. towns and to have two tracks so you could have a few trains going. So what I think we're going to do this time is we'll go right around the shed and we'll crawl under at some point and pop up in the middle. That's the plan. But obviously people that want to come and have a look at it, Thomas's mates, mummy, grandma and granddad. Your mates. I don't have any friends so I play with Lego in the shed. People I'm like really that. <laughs> when they open the door, we don't want them to have to crawl straight under. So what we're thinking is, and we've got our heater here, we'll push the scale extra track back a little bit so that you come in and the track is kind of here. And then people can stand here who are grown ups, not like me, and they can see what we're doing in the shed, but they don't have to crawl under it to play with it. That's the plan. And you can crawl under. And we can crawl under. And it needs to make, and we need to make it big enough so that we, people can crawl under. Yeah, the middle bit be big enough that. We've got to make our own tables. Anybody, we do need to make our own tables. So, let's get cracking with our skill extra. <laughs> end of the shed that'll give us an idea of what we can fit in electric over there Lego over here a bit of an entrance way and then kind of where this box is probably will be a space that we can stand in and then where there's the crawl under and there's the crawl under bit right let's get Lego in. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so it's now about seven o'clock at night. Thomas is given up. He's not done too bad. And this is kind of where I've got to this evening. Where those tubs are there, the plan is, is that will be the open space. Obviously town beyond, and then I've run some bits and pieces down here. I'm going to keep the same layout for the scale electric, and hopefully this will make it quite interesting. One of the things that you need to think about, or at least we certainly do, is making your layout interesting. It's a different kind of thing if you're modelling with uh, Hornby or you know fine scale, that kind of stuff, but scale electric and lego i think it's all about interest because it clearly isn't accurate and actually all you're after is just making something that's fun to use so we need to make sure we've got plenty of points that we can click and move decent bit of road that we can put cars on and, and obviously we want to be storing locos and trains and things uh, when we're not using them so we've got two tracks that we can have trains going around we can store trains various places and the plan might be eventually that we put a, a high level track around like we did with the previous layout so that's where we are that's going to be the end of day one of our return to the lego shed the next step will be to get ourselves to b&q or another suitable diy shop buy some wood to attach down the sides and some mdf and start planning it um, and start building it. What we're going to do before I do that is I'll measure out the distances across here for the baseboards and obviously how wide we need to be here uh, and then I'll frame it up and we'll stick some MDF on the top. Again we don't need to worry too much about levels and accuracy with Lego and Scale Electric we just need something that's reasonably robust and off the floor. So thanks for watching. I'm not quite sure how many people's going to be that interested in what we're doing but I thought it'd be quite useful to just video our new layout from the beginning. So keep an eye out for the second part.